I knew you were a good photographer, but I didn't realize you were this good. Last week on TikTok and Instagram, I asked you to submit your best photo to be edited. As part of this challenge, I said I would take three of your photos, edit them, and turn them into a preset that you could download to use on your own images. Spoiler alert, I edited more than three because the photos were just amazing. Also, thank you so much to everyone who took the time to submit and the stories and the inspirational things you wrote in your email were just incredible. Maybe we'll do more of these in the future, but stay tuned for that. If you wanna download the presets, watch to the end of the video because I'm gonna explain exactly how you can do that. So it's, it's Olympic season. Got my uh, 2010 Vancouver Olympics Canada hoodie. My uh, sweater is 12 years old. Pretty proud of that. First up is this photo from Trevor. Trevor says, hi, Anthony, I have a photo for you to edit. This was taken in Banff National Park on Lake Minnewanka. Fellow Canadian, I love how my edit turned out and I would love to see your take on it. The first thing I wanna do is crop this in because I want that peak to be right at the center. Also, this photo is a little cold. I noticed it was shot in the afternoon on a 6D Mark II with an EF 24 to 105. I'm just gonna warm this photo up a bit, bring the white balance up, and then I'm gonna jump right into my basic adjustments. I'm gonna start with an S curve and tweak it just a little bit to get more blacks out of it. I'd really like to get a lot of blue and orange out of this edit. To do that, I'm gonna have to tweak the calibration just to increase the saturation in the blue channels. Then I'm gonna jump over to the hue and the one thing I wanna do is take those yellows and move them a little bit more towards orange and those blues and move them a little bit more towards teal. I'm gonna try increasing the saturation of the oranges. Where this photo is gonna take a huge leap is gonna be under color grading. I'm gonna add some blues to the shadows and a little bit more of orange, yellow to the highlights, again for that teal and orange look. It might be stereotypical at this point, but I think this is a perfect photo to do that, not only because it's a very blue wintry photo, but also because it's a sunset photo and accentuating those oranges is gonna be perfect. Another thing I can do is when I'm happy with this is I will put a little bit of a fade off to one side of the photo. You can see here with this radial gradient, I'm gonna drop it in. I'm gonna dehaze it, but then I'm gonna warm it up a little bit too. And that just gives me a little bit more color contrast that offsets the blue with a little bit more orange. Now with this photo, I had absolutely no background information other than Caesar sent it in. It was shot on a Canon 6D Mark II, exact same as the last photo. I would like to imagine that this is Caesar's backyard and he is a royal prince living in Costa Rica somewhere. I don't even know where this photo is taken. If you know this building or if you know Caesar and know when he's having a, a backyard pool party, uh, just DM me, I will, I will come over to have a party in an instant. The biggest adjustment that I made to this photo was correcting the white balance. And as soon as I did, it became so evident that there was just a ton of color in this photo. After some messing around, I decided I was gonna desaturate most of the blues, take the yellows and slide them towards orange. I desaturated most of the greens and the blues. I increased the saturation on the oranges and the yellows. So what I'm doing is compressing the color space so that this photo kind of looks monochromatic, but with a really strong orange emphasis. Final tweaks down in color grading to really give this photo an emphasis towards the orange. I took my shadows and just gave them a kick of red. Now to offset that, I'm gonna take my highlights and my mid-tones and kind of bump the highlights more towards the blue and then the mid-tones toward this cyan. Overall, that'll give my photo a good amount of color contrast, which will really sell the vibrant oranges in this photo. Of all the photos that were submitted, this has to be my favorite. Here's where it started and here's where it ended up. This was sent in from Muhammad and he says, here is my entry for the photo challenge. I took this portrait shot in Pakistan of a farmer who was in the middle of working. He shot this on the Sony A7 III with a 55 
to 210 millimeter lens, and this is just perfect. This photo says he's been working outside all day in the sun. He's got that leathery, dark skin from just the sun hitting him all day, and his white hair is even bleached from all the sun that has just hit it, and it's turned yellow, and he's got this yellow shirt. When I looked at this photo, I thought I need to make him stand out. So one thing I'm doing with this photo is after correcting the white balance, the hue and the saturation are gonna be exactly where I go to. One of the adjustments people will make all the time is taking the greens and shifting them towards orange. What I'm gonna do is take the greens and shift them towards blue, and that will give me more contrast. Under the hue, I'm gonna keep the yellows pretty much pinned and then desaturate the reds. I'm gonna keep the blues a little bit desaturated because by taking the green trees and shifting them into the blues, it will let me get more color contrast out of this photo. And then finally, because I want to really mute the shadows and bring them into that green color spectrum, I'm gonna jump down to color grading, take the shadows, kind of make them that yellowy green. Again, we're bringing everything into that warm yellow color spectrum and then grab the highlights because basically our subject here is in the highlights and just by adding that little bit of touch of orange, it's just gonna make him pop out that much more. Here's the before, here's the after. Amazing photo. I feel like I didn't even need to edit this photo because that's just how good it is and how good of a story that it tells. After this edit, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Is there a photo that has really stood out to you as being your favorite? Or maybe there's one edit you like, but you would have maybe liked to have seen me do it different. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think. This next edit was sent in from Griffin. I don't have anything to go with it other than the fact that it was shot on a Sony 60. 400. Like the last photo, this one tells us a story. It's a couple on their morning walk along the beach of Lake Huron early in the morning towards this lighthouse. Even though we have two competing subjects in the same photo, is the lighthouse the subject or are the people the subject? For me, I think together they tell the whole story of people walking along the beach maybe going towards the lighthouse. For this edit, I really wanted to pull as much of the greens out of this as possible. I went a little bit different than what I would typically do and made a flat black matte look for this photo, but then added a bunch of greens to the midtones. You can see I'm boosting the greens a whole lot here. I'm gonna drop the yellows and the reds. We've got some red in his jacket that I don't want to take away from the photo. Under color grading, what I wanna do is take the shadows and move them towards the blue. And then going into the midtones, I'm gonna pick this more teal aqua green, and that will start to make the photo really pop because we desaturated all those other colors. Now we can bring them back with color grading. There's the before and there's the after. This edit is definitely different than the way I would normally do my photos, but I think this is a cool preset and is one I would love to try on some of the other photos I've taken recently. The next photo is another lighthouse, but instead of being in Ontario, this lighthouse is in Europe. In fact, it's from Matthew, and Matthew says, I'm a photographer based in Malta. Now, I did a little bit of research. This is the St. Elmo Lighthouse. It's shot early in the morning, and the alignment is just perfect. I don't need to do anything to this photo. All I need to do, there we go, straighten it and we're done. But seriously, sometimes sunrise photos, you don't have to do anything to them. In my case, the hardest thing is just gonna be nailing the white balance. I wasn't there, so I don't know what this looked like, but I'm getting the impression that this is probably a little bit warmer than it should be. I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a matte photo vibe. To do that, I'm gonna make my basic adjustments. For hue and saturation, I really wanna make these warm tones pop. So I'm gonna raise the oranges and the yellows and then drop the blues and the greens to really make this a singular color photo. I really want those warm tones to stand out. And once I'm happy with those base adjustments, I'm jumping down to the tone curve. Now we're gonna make a serious S-curve adjustment here, but we're both gonna raise the shadows and drop the highlights by creating this matte tone curve effect. 
Aside from that, some minor tweaks to the red curves just to pull a little bit more contrast out of the sunset. Subtle adjustments are gonna work best. Other than that, I don't need to do any color grading. This is an amazing photo and one that I would absolutely love to have in my portfolio. So good job, Matthew. This is a real banger. Now this wouldn't be a photo challenge without at least one wildlife photo. This one was sent in from Shane and I think it's an absolutely amazing photo. The bird is posed perfectly. The first thing we need to do though is just raise the exposure a heck of a lot. Sometimes it's okay to underexpose when you're shooting with those really long, higher aperture lenses. In this case, making some base adjustments pulls out all the detail we need, but I am gonna drop the clarity a little bit and the texture and dehaze it a little bit because I'm gonna jump down to the sharpness and in the sharpness what I can do is increase that but then drag the masking so that what I'll end up with is more details around the head of the bird which will really make all those feather details pop out in the photo. So once I've done my basic, really basic tone curve adjustment, I'm gonna jump down and make some pretty serious saturation adjustments. Right away, the first thing I noticed with this photo was the red. Obviously there's red on the woodpecker, but we also have the red tree, which just lands for an, a perfect amount of contrast in this photo. Once that's done, I'm gonna mute it just a little bit, add a bit of blues to the shadows and a little bit of oranges to the highlights. And that will take this photo, making it look like this photo. This really is a great photo, and I think the preset would be awesome to use on other birds and wildlife. The final photo for today is shot by my friend Scott, and this was taken on January 7th in Tacoma, Washington. Scott says it was pouring rain and me and my gear got soaked while shooting this magical sunrise. On Instagram, Scott says, Yesterday was one of those days I stood in awe watching the colors unfold in front of my eyes. I have never seen so much purple in a sunrise. I do not need to do a lot to this photo, but I am gonna try something a little bit different than what Scott did. I'm gonna make the city in the foreground appear very hazy by dropping the clarity. Tone curve adjustments, very basic. I'm not gonna do too much other than just add a bit of contrast. Under saturation, I'm gonna drop the saturation of the yellows. I feel like that will help accentuate the mountain in the background. I'm gonna make some hue adjustments to get those blues a little bit more teal. And then I'm gonna take my yellows and make them a little bit more orange. Once I've done all of that to really make this photo sing, I'm gonna come into the shadows, make the shadows look really cool. And that will kind of get the mountain and the sky looking a little bit more blue. I'm gonna bring those mid-tones into the orange, but then also the highlights. Again, I really want to emphasize emphasize those mid-tones and those highlights looking orange, and then those shadows being that cooler color to provide that amount of color contrast that I'm looking for. Here's my edit and here's Scott's edit. Not too different, but again, when you have a photo that looks this amazing, you don't really need to do that much editing to it. Those are all the photos I have for today. Let me know in the comments which of these photos you liked best and maybe even which of these presets you liked best and are excited to try. If you want the presets, make sure you look in the description. There's gonna be a sign up link for my email newsletter distribution list. The presets will be made exclusively available to those who are on that list for download. And if for whatever reason in the future, email doesn't exist and you're watching this video in 20 years, I will update the description with where you can get those presets. Now, if you didn't see your photo featured, don't worry, make sure you're following on TikTok and Instagram. That's where I announce when these photo editing contests will be taking place. Anyways, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got some value and will go ahead and download those presets to try on your own photos. That's it for me, take care.